Hey everyone, I'm Cindy and welcome back to H&E Life. And today I want to uh, go over something that I mentioned in my one of my previous videos about skincare. And today I thought I would do a little skincare 101 and also tell everyone a little bit more about my skincare routine that helped me manage my adult acne, uh, hyperpigmentation, some skin texturing issues, and some skin dryness issues. And of course, large pores. <laughs> so I think I will break down this video into two parts. Part one will be uh, me explaining all of the skincare components and ingredients and part two will be talking more about my own skin and my skincare routine. So yeah, let's get started with the skincare components. So very first thing we'll start with is the cleanser. So every good skincare routine starts with a cleanser and my recommendation for a facial cleanser is something that has low pH in it and something that is not too foamy. So what I mean by this is a lot of people when they think about cleaning their skin, they think about uh, having those foamy cleansers that make a lot of bubbles and they feel like that bubbling process cleans their skin really well. What I actually recommend is a low pH uh, gel cleanser because that causes the least amount of stripping of your face and the oil, your natural oil, so it doesn't leave your skin as dry and tight as you feel with some harsher uh, cleansers. When I mention this, I'm pretty sure a lot of you know what I'm talking about. It's when that sensation is you wash your face and then right afterwards you feel like your skin is like stretched tight across your face. It's like if you smile or move, you feel like your skin might crack. So some of you might, might associate that with clean skin, but that's actually a skin that has been stripped up of its natural oils and moisture and is kind of damaged. So the reason I recommend a low pH cleanser is because your natural skin sits at a pH about 4.5 to 5.5, uh, up to 6. And because your skin's natural pH is on the low acidic side, if you use a a uh, low pH cleanser that's around 5 to 5.5, that's actually cleansing your skin at the same pH where your skin naturally is. So therefore your skin doesn't get that stripping sensation. So that's step one and that's cleanser. So the next step in the skincare routine will be an exfoliation step. So you could use either a physical or a chemical exfoliant. So when people say physical exfoliant, they meant like if you use one of those peeling gels or God forbid, an apricot scrub or anything that has the word scrub in it, it's basically something that is a physical um, material that rubs against your skin that uh, helps clear away dead skin. So that's a physical exfoliant. When I say chemical exfoliant, I'm basically talking about AHAs, BHAs, and PHAs. And these are alpha hydroxy acid, beta hydroxy acid, and polyhydroxy acid. In terms of your chemical exfoliants, I would like to uh, lump together your AHAs and your PHAs as one group and your BHAs as a second group. So AHAs generally is glycolic acid, mandelic acid, and lactic acid. And PHAs are gentler and less sensitizing re uh, chemicals compared to your AHAs. So AHAs and PHAs work on your skin by diminishing cohesion between your corneocytes, which is basically the dead skin on the very superficial layer of your uh, epidermis. And by doing this, it kind of just removes all your dead flaky skin so that it will leave your skin overall smoother. So AHAs and PHAs also work um, with smoothing out your skin texture by promoting the formation of mucopolysaccharides in which um, hyaluronic acid is an example of and overall this health promotion of uh, your skin collagen formation and it also helps with water retention and prevention of transepidermal water loss so their way your skin feels more plump and smooth. 
Okay, so that is AHA, and that is basically, in general sense, um, a good chemical exfoliant that removes the surface dead skin cells. So BHAs um, are basically equivalent to salicylic acid. So salicylic acid is something that is mentioned a lot in uh, treatment of acne, and this is because salicylic acid is uh, fat soluble, so it penetrates deeper into your skin as compared to AHAs and it goes into um, your hair follicles and it will help clear out the dead skin cells within the hair follicles. It will also have some mild anti-inflammatory uh, effects. So basically it kind of is really good for people who have um, excess sebum, which is face oil, and it also helps with clearing out your blackheads. So that is the primary effect of BHAs or salicylic acid. And salicylic acid has also been proven in multiple research studies that it has a very good effect without overly sensitizing your skin around a 1-2% to solution. So you always want to, when you think about skincare and skincare ingredients, more does not always equal a good thing. And you'll see this as a reoccurring theme as I continue down the list of skincare stuff. So that was a broad overview of chemical and physical exfoliants and the next thing people usually do after cleansing and exfoliating would either be a toner or an essence. I kind of use them interchangeably but in the traditional sense a toner is something that is at a lower pH so the idea of the toner is it will reset your facial pH to its natural pH around the 5 to 6. By doing so it will ready your skin for the next steps in your skincare routine. What I have noticed that there is more and more toners out there now that contain AHAs and BHAs. So the chemical exfoliants and toner steps sometimes has become one thing, which is, it's great. It kind of cuts down under the number of steps in the skincare routine. And I feel like the simpler the skincare routine some, is sometimes has the better results. So after a toner, um, you can also use essence. So when I think of an essence, I think of, of it as a watered down version of a serum. And when I say this, I mean that an essence has a light texture. It kind of is very runny like water and it is kind of the essential hydration step for your skin. When you uh, apply it to your face, it is then that is the one where it's adding the most hydration into your face. And, and that prepares your face for your active ingredients followed by your occlusives. So common ingredients that I've noticed that are in uh, essences are fermented products. These are basically fermented products are things that will increase the hydration of your skin and help it feel more plump. The next step in the skincare routine would be serums. And serums is usually of a thicker consistency. And this is also where a lot of your active ingredients come into play. When I say active ingredients, I mean these are molecules and chemicals that has a specific role in improving your skin and your skin conditions. So popular active ingredients in the past year or two have been niacinamide, vitamin C, hyaluronic acid, and retinols. I feel like you hear these four things mentioned in a ton of skincare products. So let's start with niacinamide. Niacinamide is a derivative of vitamin B3. It helps with controlling of your inflammation. It helps with controlling your sebum slash oil production. It also helps promote collagen formation and ceramide formation. When you think of niacinamide, it kind of is really good to help with your redness and evening out your skin tone. And it also helps out with um, producing collagen and ceramides, which strengthen your skin and prevents transepidermal water loss. A lot of research studies have been done on the beneficial effects of niacinamide and most of these research studies use a concentration of less than 5%. And as I mentioned before, it seems like a recent trend is how much more of a product can you put on your face? And in all honesty, using anything greater than 5% is not supported by science. And also if you use too high of amount, it will cause your skin irritation. And you might think that, oh, maybe this product is not good for me, even though it is, it's just at too high of a concentration. So the next really popular 
uh, active ingredient I want to talk about is hyaluronic acid. And hyaluronic acid is a molecule that is naturally produced by your skin. And when you add more hyaluronic acid, the purpose of it is to retain water. I forgot the exact number, but I think different forms of hyaluronic acid retains a different multiple multitude of water. I think some of it say it's like 5,000 times its own molecular weight in water. So in a sense, hyaluronic acid is a humectant and it holds onto water in your skin. It is really great in that sense because it keeps uh, your skin hydrated, but I have to say hyaluronic acid is really good in certain situations. And so what I mean by this is that since hyaluronic acid pulls water and holds it in that layer that's applied onto your skin, if you actually are in a very dry environment, such as in the desert or in the middle of Chicago winter, and there is not much moisture in the air, or you're not putting a, enough uh, hydration into your skin through your skincare products, what can end up happening is that layer of hyaluronic acid on your skin is now pulling water from deeper within your skin, thereby actually dehydrating your skin instead of hydrating it. So hyaluronic acid is very good if you live in a more humid environment or you apply a generous amount of hydrating skincare ingredients. And that said, I don't think you need a product dedicated to hyaluronic acid because it has become something that almost all skincare products have a little bit. It's just na it's now all over your creams, it's all over your serums, it's in your toners, it's in, it's in your cleansers, it's in any step you could think of. If you look at an ingredient list, there's probably hyaluronic acid or uh, sodium hyaluronate or some version of that term. So I don't think you need a dedicated step for hyaluronic acid given the fact that it's kind of everywhere. So the next one I want to talk about would be vitamin C. So vitamin C, it's something that, um, yes, you naturally eat in your oranges and your fruits and your vegetables, but the amount of vitamin C you consume, actually very, very little of it, it makes it to your skin. So that's why it's good to supplement your skin with its own vitamin C. And the beneficial ingredients of vitamin C is that it is a very potent antioxidant. What I mean by this, it is they're helping your skin against oxidative stress, which is something you experience all the time. As long as your face is exposed to the air and the environment, it's constantly under attack by oxidative stress. And it's even worse when you're in a big city and there's more pollutants in the air. Other ways vitamin C helps your skin is it prevents collagen breakdown and also help promote collagen formation. And collagen is key to your skin because it forms majority of your dermis and it's what keeps your face uh, and your skin looking plump and youthful. As we age, we lose collagen and that's when wrinkles start setting in and your skin start to sag a little bit. So vitamin C helps kind of prevent and promote additional collagen formation. That said, it won't prevent your skin from aging whatsoever, but it is anti-aging effects. The last active ingredient I want to talk about is uh, retinoids. And when I say retinoids, it's kind of a spectrum of um, vitamin A derivative products, which starts from the least inactive form, which is retinol esters, to the most active form, which is tretinoin, also known as retinoic acid. And in between the least active to the most active, you have retinol, which is something that's very common. And then you have retinol aldehydes. And um, you could purchase the spectrum up to retinol aldehydes uh, over the counter, but the very active form, the tretinoin, is something that you have to get from your dermatologist or your family med physician. Um, it is prescription only. And the benefits of retinol is it basically does everything. Everything I've just mentioned, it does a little of everything. So retinol does similar things that your AHA would do, your salicylic acid would do, your niacinamide would do, your vitamin C will do. So it's kind of like the end all be all of anti-aging and skincare problem solvers. It will help with acne, it will help with uh, oil control, it will help with fine lines, and it also promotes collagen formation in your skin. It will also help 
with trans epidermal water loss. It can also help with um, anti-inflammatory responses. It also helps with decreasing uh, oil formation on your skin. So when you think about it, it kind of does a little of everything. That's why it's kind of like the uh, ingredient of uh, skincare. But being such an amazing thing, it also is the most irritating thing you could put on your face in terms of a skincare ingredient. The most inactive form, the retinol esters, is the least irritating, whereas tretinoin is the most irritating. And when you're experimenting with retinols, my advice is start with the lowest possible dose you could get your hands on and use it at the very most every other day and even then, when I first started retinol, I used a 0.3% retinol solution. And after my first application, I felt it. My skin was burning and there was redness and I end up flaking more. So yeah, it's very irritating. And something that also turns people away from retinol is that it does have this period where you're purging. And when I say this, it basically means uh, retinol works by increasing your cell turnover in your skin. If you had an acne developing uh, deep down, it will make all of that acne pop out on your surface of your skin faster. So when you first start retinol, not only is your face irritated, your pimples will come out faster and more and you're all, you're all of a sudden be like, oh my god, my face is irritated. I have all these pimples. Retinol is not for me. But what my experience with, and most dermatologists say, if you are starting a retinol, just keep going with it. Just keep going, let it, let that purge phase go through and you'll start noticing the effects. Usually about two to three months into using it. I know, but at the same time, that's, it's all of skincare. Very few things that in skincare that will make it immediate effect on your skin. If it's something that does make an immediate effect, it's usually temporary. If you want to see long-term constant effects, you have to keep using your skincare on a regular basis for months on end before you see permanent changes. So the second to last step in your skincare routine will be a moisturizer. And a moisturizer is basically an occlusive that holds in all of the hydration and the active ingredients that you have layered onto your face to allow it for absorption and keep some moisture in. When you choose a moisturizer, it depends on your skin. If you are more of a dry skin person, you will want to choose a thicker moisturizer, whereas if you're oilier skin, you would want to choose more of a um, watery gel tex textured uh, moisturizer. And honestly, a moisturizer, it, it doesn't need to be anything special. You don't need a th two, $300 moisturizer. You just need something that is thick enough that will form an occlusive layer over your skin to allow all the other things you put on your skin absorb into it. Now we'll get to the very last step in the skincare routine and the most important important step in a skincare routine, which is sunscreen. Okay, sunscreen. There's a lot of information in sunscreen. So the very start, no, you do not need to use sunscreen if you're doing your skincare routine at night. Yes, absolutely yes, you have to use a sunscreen in the daytime. And the reason is the sun, which is all a wonderful uh, produces UV rays. Um, and the most commonly talked about is UVA rays and UVB rays. So let's start with UVB rays because that is um, something that's, that most people think of when they think of UV. So UVB are uh, rays that will hit the surface of your skin and that it will cause sunburns. It will also cause damage to your cell's DNA and that's what can also lead to cancer. Now let's go talk about UVA rays. So UVA rays will uh, go deeper into your skin and it will cause some amount of cell damage, which may lead to some types of skin cancer. But the main thing that's associated with is photo damage, which causes things like premature uh, wrinkling and aging of your skin. All right, so that said, those are the two types of UV rays and why sunscreen is so important and why no picking the right sunscreen is so important is because in the sunscreen there is the SPF number, which is the number that says how 
strong, it will protect you against UVB rays. And there is the PA system, which is in most Asian sunscreens, which is a measure of how effective that sunscreen is against blocking UVA rays. Unfortunately, in the US, uh, the PA system has not been approved yet of as a measure of uh, sunscreen. So in the US, if you read a sunscreen that says broad spectrum, then that means that sunscreen covers both UVA, UVA and UVB. So what SPF should you use? At SPF 30, it will prevent about 97% of UVB penetration to the skin and at 50, it will prevent 98%. So that is why it's highly recommended that you pick a sunscreen that's at least 30 and ideally around 50 SPF. And that is because it will prevent majority of UVB penetration to your skin. Another thing is actually windows will prevent the penetration of UVB. However, windows will not block UVA. So when you are in uh, indoors, you want to always wear sunscreen because you're still getting UVA penetration and that is causing your photo aging for your skin. If you buy Asian sunscreens, the PA system starts from one plus all the way up to four pluses. And basically one plus says that there is some sort of protection against UVA rays in the sunscreen. Four pluses is this is the maximum amount of UVA, um, protection. I think most uh, Asian sunscreens is usually an SPF of at least 45 and a PA of three pluses. And it's so, 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 so important that not only do you use a sunscreen, you also need to use the appropriate amount, uh, which I think the, there are studies shown that people don't actually use the proper amount of sunscreen. What you need to use is actually um, a quarter size amount of sunscreen or about a teaspoon of sunscreen for your face and neck. And a rough way of estimating is you squeeze the sunscreen to cover a nice two thick lines on both of your index and your middle finger. And that should be about enough to cover your face and your neck. It never hurts to apply more because when um, sunscreen testing is conducted, they actually put on teaspoons and teaspoons of sunscreen all over the testers. And if you're just using, you know, a little pea sized amount and just like dotting it over your face, you're not getting the SPF that the sunscreen is offering. You're getting much, much less than that. And therefore you're not using a sunscreen efficiently. The other thing you need to do is you need to reapply sunscreen because the sunscreen filters, they do kind of go away over time after being exposed to sunlight as well as well if you're exposed to sunlight most people sweat and the sunscreen even if it says is uh waterproof it is not it is water resistant and the more water it's exposed to uh, either through your just normal skin normal environment you're sweating or you go swimming that sunscreen will come off and so you need to reapply the recommendation on most sunscreen products is every two hour i guess i would say if you are out and active in the sun yes every two hours but if you're kind of just sitting there by a window doing work or studying, you probably could stretch that a little longer in terms of reapplying because we all know, especially good facial sunscreens are so expensive. But that said, it is the most important thing. If you only do one thing for your skin every single day, it is to put sunscreen on your face. All right, so that was Skincare 101. So I know that was a lot of information. I hope it was informative and it wasn't too confusing. I'm trying to do it since I am not a dermatologist. I am actually a pathologist. This is all from my own online research um, and reading some papers of healthy skincare products. And this is my own understanding and summarization for you guys. And I hope you enjoyed today's video. Um, this has been really fun for me. So that's it for me today. Please like and subscribe and I'll see everyone next time. Bye!